more than a conqueror needs to be believed more than anything else. Amen? Needs to be believed more than anything else. You need to believe it. So, and you need to understand it. But you need to believe it more. If you believe it more, you are better placed. God is good. Because we are talking about being more than a conqueror. Now, we open Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Romans 8, 37. I want us to begin there because that is the key uh, ingredient. It says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Amen. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Give me the same scripture in the Passion Translation. Then we go back to uni, NLT, yeah. Passion says, yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. God is good. God is good. Then to Angalia King James. Sour. All those three are going to be relevant somewhere, somehow. King James. And Sama, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. This is the simplest form of the scripture. God is good. Sasa, today. The book of Romans is a very interesting book. Can I start from somewhere like that? Let me say something interesting about Romans. I love the book of Romans. Because Romans is like the Christian's manual. Amen. It's a book in the Bible that is a Christian's manual. It's the book of Romans. It's a very interesting book. And... When Paul is talking about this, the book of Romans is in four parts. The first part of the book of Romans is talking about our need for God. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 is about sin and sin and guilt, sin and guilt. Chapter 3 up to chapter 8 is talking about God doing something about our issues. You get it? Chapter 1, 2, 3 is we have an issue. Chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is God doing something about the issue. We are together. Good. Then chapter 9, 10, 11 are not really anything else. Chapter 9, 10, 11 is Paul looping in the Jews. Amen? And the Gentiles. Because the church in Rome was a mature church. That is why the book of Romans is a mature book. The church in Rome was not formed by Paul. The church in Rome was formed after the, what happened on the day of Pentecost. So Pentecost, Kakilipuka, these fellows who disappear, some of them, they go back to Rome and they form a church on the days of Pentecost. So Paul is writing this book, potentially a Komali Corinth, Corinth. So writing this book, why you find he writes a lot of very powerful things in this book is because he's also trying to validate himself to the church in Rome before he goes there. He's trying to show them that even I understand a few things. And that is why the book of Romans, I've always said you read it as a whole. If you read it in parts, you lose it. It's the only book in the Bible that I think the verse in front is always most relevant. God is good. It's very hard to find the book of Romans a verse that hangs by itself. It's like a whole long story. So this ties to that, ties to that, ties to that. So here, chapter 8, we are at the center of, of the peak of the second part, which is God doing something. We are together. Chapter 8 is God doing so. Chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is God taking action of what had happened in chapter 1, 2, 3. We are together until that point. God is good. Now, understanding that, 
it's good to note that where he's writing this from and what has happened in his life at this point. You together? Remember, he has just come from a place where he has been stoned. And the Bible, the way it's written, records as though he died. Are we together? Have you read that part of the, of the Bible? Please say yes. Michael Bersoma. I'm going to say my two because of Pamela. I don't trust you. Okay. So. so, he's writing this after he has experienced a lot of things. I'm a Tukanwa. I'm a Quaridical. Then he has been stoned and technically he died. Because he talks about going to a place that is wonderful beyond understanding. But the history says that after he was beaten, he was thrown. And where they threw him, they knew he was dead. Amen. There is never full confirmation that he died. He never says he died and came back from the dead. But his story records that he might have died when he was stoned. God is good. So this is that guy. Now, when he is saying, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him, but loved us. Going back NLT. Umeenda verse 1. Uko ni mbali. Give me verse 35. Can anyone ever separate us from God's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us? Very important. If we have trouble or calamity. God is good. If you those underline your Bible, this is a very powerful underline. But NLT na sema peke yake. Others don't say this. Can anyone else, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean that he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or are hungry or cold or in danger or threatened with death? Does it mean he no longer loves us? When things don't go our way, does it mean he no longer loves us? Father is asking. Because there is a question at times in Akujanga to a believer. When things don't go your way, there is very easy for us to think, does God still love me? Remember last week, Leongea? Through the law of gravity. You remember? Those who are here. We said it is easy for you to be dragged down. Very easy to think that God has left me. That is why I don't like those songs that talk about God leaving us or God remembering us. God is good. Hallelujah. Unikumbuke. Yesu. Unabozuru wengine wengine nani? Who are the wenginess? What did the wenginess do? For him to uzurura them. Are you communicating? I don't like those songs because they create a notion that when I'm in the middle of difficulty, in the middle of darkness, in the middle of trial, in the middle of tribulation, I, it, is, it makes me think that that is when God is farthest. And we normally forget that that is when God is actually closest. Because it is impossible for you to survive anything if God doesn't choose for you to survive. You can't survive it. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Sunday I'll teach something very different and very interesting. I'll be talking about the divine setup. Amen. The divine setup. And I'll be looking about um, how the Lord sets our, our lives up wonderfully. Amen. But your life is actually a snare to the devil. Wonderful, isn't it? But your life is a trap to the devil. I don't know if you ever thought about that. You know how the devil thinks he has trapped you. But yet your life is the devil's trap. Hallelujah. Sunday we'll talk about that. Amen. God is good. So it is easy for me to think that because things are bad, the Lord has left me. How many of you have ever heard this funny story about the footsteps in the sand? To make a story. You know, as you know, there were two, there were four footsteps. Then they were walking. Then you know, at some point there were two footsteps. Then the guy asks, Where were you this time when things were bad? And God says, That's when I was carrying you. You know that story, right? Because the biggest miracle of salvation happens in the darkest hours. God is closer when it's darker than any other time. Are we together? So Paul asks, give me verse 36. I want to go swiftly and quickly. 
Even scripture say, this is uh, Psalms 44 or something, says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. God is good. Give me the next verse. No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. It's very easy to read a scripture and say, I am more than a conqueror. We forget the verse before it says, every day I am a sheep, I'm a sheep set for slaughter. That is what qualifies verse 37. In the moment you have Jesus, there is an X on your back. Every day, the devil wakes up thinking of you. Hallelujah. Your phone doesn't ring. And you wonder no one thinks of me. Don't worry. The devil thinks of you. Every day, anamukanga na wewe. Every day, he's planning, plotting, and scheming. The point of for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. Every day I wake up, the enemy wants my life to end. Every day, the devil wants to do something in your life that ends your life. Good morning, my fellow believers. Happy New Year. We normally assume that the deeper you are in the Holy Ghost, the more the devil walks far from you. No. The deeper you are in the Holy Ghost, the more he wants to walk near you. In fact, the, the law of spiritual warfare is that, I said it before, a demon that is beneath you cannot fight you. Hello? A demon beneath you cannot fight you. The demon that fights you is of your spiritual level. Meaning that when Miriam was here, and her and the devil are going to the same place. The demons fighting Miriam had no effect in her life. She couldn't feel them violently fight her. When Miriam took one step to grow in the Lord. And she met a demon that was strong. When Miriam moved higher, she met a stronger demon. When Miriam moved higher, she met a stronger demon. Why do you think people backslide? Why do you think people backslide? Why do you think people journey, journey, journey? When I think I'm out of it has been good when they go. Why do you think so? Because the battle that is here, I'll say in my life, the spiritual battle I fight now, if I compare what I was fighting 15 years ago, that was child's play. That was complaining. What I'm fighting now is different. Good morning. What I'm fighting now is of extreme. The things that the enemy tries me with now are greater. But the illusion is always, if you run back, you are safe. But spiritually, the devil records, you are here. So, what out rock you huko? Utapigana na huyu wa hapa? Without capacity. I'll teach that and talk about, about fun, 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 in familiar spirits. Tuna communicate. Aman mistu amtu. Ham just took a shindio. Amen. For your sake, we are killed every day. We are being run like sheep. Meaning that every single time, the enemy is planning, he's plotting. So the previous verse says, nothing separates me from God's love. God's love is in my life. It is permanent. It is a sure thing. But because God loves me, because God loves me, then every day, I have a target on my back on a daily basis. We are together. Then Paul goes on to say, but all these things don't count for one reason. I am more than a conqueror. Being more than a conqueror, number one is this, is that every day you have fought, every day you have won. If every day you fight and every day you win, you're no longer a conqueror, you're more than a conqueror. Because every day you have prevailed. Hallelujah. We never recognize how many days you have prevailed. We always look at the day that we are fighting. Good morning, everybody. And look at the days you have prevailed. Look at the fact that the devil has been trying to kill you from when you were a child. He has tried to kill you to now you are still here. If you look, I have prevailed. For 51 years of my life, I have prevailed. 
then I need to remind myself that I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah, kila mutu. Tuna communicate. Yes. The victory that we are told here is a product of love. He loves us. We are more than conquerors, give me King James. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It is through the love that the victory is experienced. It is through love that victory is experienced. We know all these things, in all these things, all means what? All means what? All. Meaning every area in your life, the enemy is trying to kill you. Every part of your life, the enemy is there, working. But Paul is saying, in all these things, all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Paul is saying this, but I cannot conquer. But I'm conquering because I am loved. Not that. Not that. In the height of your biggest trial is the time you remember you're loved the most. Because love always finds a way. We are together. Haki tunaonge. Wakati kami umana is when you sing that song. You know that song kwa primary? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Amen. So I think you know the shooting of reckless love. God is good. And it's too much, too many lies, too many words. Yes, wani penda katu habo. Because in that time when the stomach hurts and it doesn't make sense, is when you close and say, But Father, you love me. I am more than a conqueror through your love. I'm not more than a conqueror because I'm a survivor. I'm not more than a conqueror because I'm strong. I'm more than a conqueror because I am loved. The love you have for me guarantees my victory in this situation. Lucifer has no response to the love of God. We are together. Actually, Wambi, at our cut, you are trying to pray. And you are getting into, you are trying to pray. And you find prayer has a roadblock. The first thing that unlocks your prayer is, Lord, you love me too much to allow me to be far. Lord, you love me too much for you to be far. I might not feel it in my heart, but I am sure he loves me, therefore he's there. God is good. God is good. Are we together? In all these things, everything in my life, I'm more than a conqueror through the love that God has for me. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes shall not perish but have everlasting life. Out of the love, it means I have victory for life. So whatever I'm encountering, I have to go back and remember that there is love and the love is in the past of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nikitaja Yesu as my way out of every situation. The devil cannot respond to love. Lucifer cannot respond to love. But when Lucifer is trying Olive, he wants Olive to question the love God has for her. The first thing the devil wants you to question is how much God loves you. And do you know how he makes it? Good morning, my fellow human beings. Number one, don't write it, I'm just saying. Number one is human expectations. You know what I mean by that? God is good. This is my wife. If you don't know. God is good. Her being my wife, me being her husband, there is something she has. It's called what? A human expectation. The devil always makes you question the love of God. Through a human being. Always. Ndiyo kwa maana, wakati yenye Miriam anapitia vitu, na Miriam amekaa chini, atasema nini? No one picked up my call when I was going through a lot of things. Miriam does not recognize that human beings come and go. God remains. We fail to conquer because of our dependency on human beings. I'm saying that because last time I checked, I was one. Tunonge hapo. Amasi ongeleshi mutu. Because 
God does not work in any other position in your life. God works as number one. He says in the book of Isaiah, he says, I am a jealous God, my glory I give to no other. God works as number one. But God will always want my human relationships to determine the intensity of how much God loves me. If my marriage is working well, then I am very loved. I want to come and sing praises and do everything. When my marriage shakes, my prayer life shakes. How often have I found people who don't come to prayer because, because something happened? Their father maybe did something. And someone said, I can't even pray. Why? Because when I hear the, the pray, God is the father, I think of my father, I'm tired. And that's what happens. And the devil will always ensure that in the life of Olive, the human expectation, Olive will sit and say, I expected my father to do this. Then Olive questions the love of God in her life. So many of us are not conquering because we silence the love of God in our lives and the volume of human love is high. Please come and Paul. The volume of the human love is high. So even my prayer life and the focus of my life is the human being that I love. The human being I love is the center of my prayer. Lord, touch the human being that I love. Lord, change the human being that I love. Lord, increase the human being that I love. Lord, make the human being that I love to love me too. God, me you are you very important. And we stay there. And you find that people will come that way. And I'll tell you this. I've done this for many years. Many people that I have worked with. People who walked away. Because I was telling them, fall in love with God first. People think this is madness. I want this thing fixed. Whew. Three months. Victor Mungo amesema. Amesema. Amenda. Hallelujah. While our Victor Nione. Miss Jake from Ganga, last time I checked. God is good. Amen. No, I was surprised when someone told me that. Those words, Victor, Nione. I'm not saying it. It's different telling me, Victor, pray with me that God leads us in this thing. Pray for me, let me know about this. It's different. But Victor, Ibu, Nione. Unajwena wanyesha pali unayendanga. Ni hile mahali. Mimi. Sina kio. God is good. Sina kio. Hallelujah. But I'm saying that because in the reality is that the enemy always wants us to forget that there is a constant love that is the love of the Father. This love of the Father in my life guarantees me victory in every area of my life. If I focus on this love every day, every day, with the understanding that it's the only love that I need, because out of this love, then I can give love. Are we together? If I don't have this love, I can't give love. Are we in communication? Because if I don't have this love, then automatically the love that I give is a love that has demand. It has demands. I'm expecting from you. Hallelujah. Am I going too deep or too far? I'm expecting. I'm expecting. And that's what breaks our hearts. What breaks our hearts is what? It's expectation. I was expecting that you would. I was expecting that since I, then you would. I was expecting that because I, then you would. That's what breaks our hearts. Our hearts don't break of anything else. Our hearts break because people let us down on our expectations. I expected you to be faithful. I expected you not to betray me. I expected you will be with me when I'm crying. I expected you. So everything else is mute. And God is behind you saying, I am right here. Just stand. I am everything you need. If you know how much I love you, the mountain before you, you will conquer. If you know how much I love you, this obstacle you will beat. But no. Mpana. Maika kukuja. Some of us have lost friends because they didn't come for a funeral. They make good speed. Turn the road up again. Let me come back here. Hallelujah. I'm serious. 
I hear people saying crazy things, but if you are my friend, you would have come for the funeral. If you are my friend, you would have come for the wedding. If you are my friend, you would have. No. In fact, because God loves me so much, as long as I'm standing by that grave and Christ stands with me, I'm fine. Because Jesus can wipe away my tears, they never come again. You would pay a tissue. True or false? I'm serious. I hear people saying that. The funniest thing is for weddings. At if you don't come to my wedding, you're not, you're not, you're not my, my friend. Let us be honest. Do you even know who came for your wedding? I'm asking. Jane, do you know who came for your wedding? But if you don't come for my wedding, you're not my friend. You think you care? God is, in fact, at your wedding, you wonder why did those people, all these people come here? They all came to eat my food. Why did they come to eat my food? Hallelujah. God is good. Because I am expecting, I expected my father to hold my hand. I expected my father to do this. I'm saying this, let me bring a personal testimony in. My dad was a very connected man when he was younger. When he grew older, he lost his connections because his friends retired with him. One of the things that I wanted, what I thought would happen, my dad used to say very many great things. So when I finish school, I'm expecting a few things. One, I thought in my head for a minute that my dad would hold my hand and ensure I get a job. Because my dad's stories in the house were always nilipea mtoto na ni kazi. Nilipea mtoto na ni kazi. Nikapea mtoto na ni kazi. Nikapea mtoto na ni kazi. Sasa mimi si mtoto wa nani? Siendi nani? God is good. So see, I'm expecting. Amen. But I looked at and I realized this man is not the man he used to be. I was not born again. I wasn't born again. I was 19 years old at the, at the time. I was not born again. I remember one morning I was walking because I'd tied out for some athletics trials and they backfired. <laughs> Jackie. Jackie. Even the what one of Even what of too. It's so genuine. It goes so genuine. I'm so genuine. I'm so genuine. I'm so genuine. I'm so genuine. Was I there? Did I do these things? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I was very fast during my days. Hallelujah. Yes. Huh? I was very fast. I'm, I'm, I was very fast. Sai, of course. Sai na kimbia na maombi. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was printing prayer. <laughs> and, I tried and, I, and, I, and I was to get a scholarship, an athletic scho um, um, scholarship. Things didn't work out. So I went back home and I was looking and I had hurt my leg or something. I was home. And I was walking towards Kasarani there. And in my mind, I thought. A thought came to me. I wasn't born again. A thought came to me. I come from a big family. My dad was long retired by then. Um, he has no connections. I look at home, I think we are all at home. I, I'm trying to think um, what was happening. I'm trying to remember very But what I remember, my own decision. I was 19 and I was walking. And I thought, what if? I thought about an agent. And I thought, what agents do for people? And I thought, if I had an agent, maybe I would have gotten that athletic scholarship. So if I had an agent, I'd get an athletic scholarship. Then I thought, but if my dad would be able to call someone and just push, they give me another chance, maybe I get the scholarship. Then a thought came to me. What if God, you decide to be my father? See, I'm saying it. What if you decide? He's already my father, but I'm saying what if you decide? Then a word came to me and I thought, hmm, if God is my agent and is my father, won't he take me to places I've never been? Won't I go to places I've never seen before? Will I not be able to overcome 
the situation that I'm in right now. My dad had lost a lot of things. Amen? Opportunities, doors, everything. His home is retired. My mind is hanging. So at 19, I came home. Told my mom that I found a school and I, and I want to go. Tukasumbwana hapo a few days ni 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 I remember I went prayed for the administration I mean registration I came back I remember I think I went my dad came home that morning we went with him I got registered got and told me okay let's see what we'll do about school fees after a week I went home I told them I want to move out and I told me what to the man to move out my father was very happy one less stomach to feed. Go with your appetite. I remember you were and I end of He let me go and I walked out. We didn't have a fight. I left. When I left, my mind shifted from that day. I wasn't born again. My mind shifted from that day. And I said that if God is my father, I'll operate like God is my father. And I did not know about the love of God then. But my mind was like, God, you're my father. And I began thinking like that. So everything I did, I had the mind, he's my father, he's my father. The remarkable thing is that when I come to encounter the Lord later on in, in my life, and I encounter the love of God, and I encounter him as a father, then I realize that what he could do in my life, my father could never do. I realized where he would take me, my father would never take me. And I quickly began to let go. And before even my father rested, my heart had shifted. To looking at God as the father who loves me. And as the only point of love that I need. Are we communicating? And my love for him from now after my encounter with him. I was like, no, me, I'm crazy in love with this guy. And I want this love to keep on growing. So every day I was there, you, you are my father. You are my father. You'll open that door. You'll provide for me food. You'll take me here. You are my father. I realized I did not need anything else. I realized if my father opened a door, I would enter. If my father said I sit at a table, I would sit. If he said I would go, I would go. And I always used to come back and tell him, Father, do you approve? Father, do you approve? By the time my father was coming to rest, I respect my father. Amen. I respect my father. The same way I want my kids to respect me. But I want them not to see me as their source. I am not Abba. We are together. I am not Abba. I don't want them to see me as their source. I want them to see the Father as their source because I'm not eternal. I don't know how long I live. But God will not die. Sindio, God is around. And so quickly I began to think that if I have an obstacle and the obstacle is this high, and I look at it and think, how do I overcome this obstacle? I begin to say, but Father, you love me. You love me. You love me. And I began those crazy prayers. You said you'll give up Tyre and Sidon. You'll give up nations for me because you love me. Because you love me. And everything I did, I anchored on how much he loved me. How much he loved me. And there are times I would push back and tell him I love you so much. But there are times I lean on that because I am more. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. So you are facing an issue in your life and it's big. In times before you start coming and removing your sword and saying I demolish and I abolish and I uproot. Stand fast and say, but father you love me anyway. If this doesn't change, it doesn't define how much you love me. Let's start from there. I am loved. That gives you security. You stop being insecure. You stop being insecure. You stop being clingy. Clingy, sorry. Are we communicating? It is easy for you to stand and ask God, God, what are we praying for? And something personal to your heart. God can tell you the outcome. He can tell you, let go of this job. You're losing it in one week. Because God knows 
that you know he loves you and the job doesn't define his love for you. Are we together? That gives you balance. That gives you balance. Give me songs of Solomon. Think chapter 6. Wimbo wa Solomon. Turn your eyes from me. I can't take it anymore. I can't resist the passion of these eyes that I adore. Overpowered by a glance, my ravished heart undone. Held captive by your love, I am truly overcome for your undying devotion to me is the most yielded sacrifice. Next verse. The shining of your spirit shows how you have taken my truth to become balanced and complete. The shining of your spirit, small s, the shining of your meaning to your spirit, the shining of your spirit shows how you have taken my truth to become balanced and complete. Amen. To become balanced and complete. If you are more than a conqueror, there is balance. Hakuna kupanik na kustuka. Hakuna kasirika because people didn't pick up your call. Because they didn't contribute to your harambe. They didn't come for your baby shower. They didn't come for your bridal shower. Hallelujah. That's it, Jesus. <laughs> Are we communicating? Hakuna kufura, but I was here and because Olive never picked up my call, then I judge you. No, I can think because I'm balanced and complete. I can say Olive didn't pick up my call because she never had the grace to deal with my life at that point. Miriam didn't come for my father's funeral because she didn't have the grace to be with me at that point. Simple and clear. But your life is now governed by grace. But you think it is grace that gives Mike the ability to stand in the gap for me. It is grace that gives Jane the ability to be there for me. If Jane can't be there, it means she has no grace. Grace is not forced. Grace is natural. If someone can't be there for you, they can't be there because they have no grace. What is that? I've left seven times in one month. What is it now? All of you are useless. You are all backstabbers, betrayers. Then I left. Two weeks later, Umerudi. We make a good morning message. Praise God. It's a beautiful morning. We thank God. Hallelujah. Why? If I am facing a mountain and I am loved, I am balanced and complete because God completes me. Today on the radio, I said something dangerous. I said on the show, someone asked a question. And I said, in my own teachings, my own reflections, seven reasons, top reasons why marriages fail. I said in the top three is children. Now I have your attention. Top three, seven reasons why marriages break. Top three, children in the top three. Someone asked me why on the show. I said, this is because children are highness. I'm a child to a mother. I didn't come from heaven. God is good. I'm a child, just like all of you. But I said, children are, are like drugs. Because some people believe that children make the marriage complete. Yet God makes you complete. But someone thinks, the child makes me complete. As long as they are children, the marriage is complete. And children are beautiful because children take, children are in the prime of the marriage. The prime years of the marriage when the children are. Hallelujah. Then they go with the prime. Love bang in Asia. Love manangalena kama watu wajuani. God is good. Manangalena kama strangers. Hello. Nambia za couple, nambia washikane, washikane hivi. Ikakua kung fu. Hold your wife like this. Mekua kung fu hapa. Nini bana. Nikasema ya shikane ni mukono. Waka shikane hivi. Kambia move closer. Waka shonga mbele. Ngajua hapa. Kali umana kitambo. 
ni mekea watu so much pressure, but they have come for a marriage class. Hallelujah. They have come for a marriage class. They are taking notes for mekea mbele. Lakini shikana, wo kung fu. Tulirekodi yo nyashi. Tulirekodi yo. Tuliko na mali. Move closer, they move forward. Una activity in ingia maji. You begin a new talk. On another talking in umpia. Let's talk about something else. Holding hands in marriage. But <laughs> it was remarkable. But I'm saying this because if you have taken the truth, what is the truth? I am more than a conqueror. Paul says, every day I am a sheep led to the slaughter. This doesn't mean God doesn't love me. Verse 35. 36, I'm a sheep led to the slaughter. But it says, no matter what I am being done in my life every day, my truth is I am more than a conqueror. Why am I more than a conqueror? Because I am loved by Jesus. Amen. But the devil can't prevail in my life because I am loved by Jesus. And that is why in the next verse he says what? Nothing separates me from the love of God. He says that from context. The context is the love is the source of victory. So Anasema, the moment you are separated from love, you are guaranteed to fail. God heals you out of the power of his love. God delivers you out of the power of his love. God provides out of his love. When the love of God leaves your life, then there is no use that God, nothing God can do for you. To not communicate. To not communicate. Good. Very quick, write, 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 write this down. So four things that the love of God does in your daily battles. Four things the love of God will do in your daily battles. Number one, it will make you more than a conqueror because you continuously win. Why? The love of God is continuous. That's what it does in your daily battles. Number one, it makes you more than a conqueror because you continuously win. Number two, the love of God manifests his power that works for you. It manifests his power that works for you. You cannot derive the power of God without understanding the love of God. The love of God produces the power of God. Are we together? The more you know your love, the more the anointing flows. The more you know your love, the more the provision flows. The more you know your love, the more the healing flows. The more peace flows. All the miracles you need flow from the love of God. Number three, we share in the spoils of victory with Jesus. We share in the spoils of victory with Jesus. Isaiah 53, 12. And number four, we access the heart of God. It's the most powerful thing. We access the heart of God. This is Songs of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 5 and 7. We are together till there. When the Bible says we are more than conquerors, it is present continuous. You didn't conquer yesterday and end. Every day you are conquering. Every day you are more than a conqueror. That is your truth. That is your truth. You are fighting generational altars. Every day I am more than a conqueror. You are fighting an illness. Every day I am more than a conqueror. Are we together? Everything in my life, every day I declare I am more than a conqueror. Some breakthroughs we require in our lives come because we are stubborn. In refusing to accept that we are defeated. And that God is defeated. Some victories come because you are stubborn in saying it's about time, it's ending. In Aisha. Ah, now I'm very close. I am very close. Some victory comes because you are stubborn. Some victory doesn't come because there's a sign in the air. God is good. Ah, ndo hiyo, ndo hiyo. God is good. Umeenda kutransfer pesa kona insufficient funds. 
Vanda akasema hii economy. Sema I am close. Breakthrough is close. Hallelujah. Are we together? You have been praying for healing every day. You wake up on the back still aches. You're like today is worse than yesterday. No, you don't say that. Say today I'm closer. The back pains but I'm closer. These are the final kicks of a dying horse. At times our own confession that it is ending is powerful. Because some deliverance and some healing and some breakthroughs come by our own stubbornness to refuse to yield defeat and to speak victory in our lives. Mnanishika. But apana sijaisha. Ah tumeanza ni karibu. Hata ndio hii tunamaliza. Tunamaliza. Hii ni ya mwisho. Hallelujah. This is the last headache. This is the last stomach ache. This is the last back ache. This is the last debt. This is the last time nasumbuliwa na landlord. Na amebisha mlango karibu abebe mlango wende nayo. God is good. Namwambia sawa. Hii naisha it is ending. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I have preached in this class before and I say there's something called sustaining grace. And sustaining grace is the grace that God gives you in the middle of a storm to survive it that you may have your breakthrough. In the time of sustaining grace you speak victory. You are more than a conqueror. I have overcome this illness. I have overcome this issue. My marriage has been healed. Amen. This debt has been broken. Hallelujah. Your kids can be home because of school fees. Unasema msijali ni mwaka tu. Msistuke ni mwaka ai. Mnasuka. So in this year. Next year, hii shida itakuwa. Cheni waambie. God is good. It's part of what we are learning today. I'll say something at the end which will contradict what I've just said now. But work with me. God is good. Hallelujah. John 16:33 says, I'm bringing this home practically. He says, I have told you all this that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. He doesn't say take heart because you have overcome the world. Take heart because I have overcome the world. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus. Aki tunaongea mutu. Ama naacha atuko highway. Muku expressway. Tuka pamoja mu. Are we together? Good. Mother took up a Good. Through, through him, not by him, not with him, through him, he is the way to the victory. So it says, take heart because I have overcome the world. It doesn't say take heart because you have overcome. He says, I have overcome the world on your behalf. Because I overcome on your behalf, then if you believe in me, also you share in the spoils. God is good. Now, Tufanya practical. Let me give you simple things. Five things. Five things to do to experience this winning. I should have to simplify this. So five things. Five simple spiritual things you'll do. Number one, train your thoughts. Train your thoughts. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the standards of this world. But what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform spiritual law of gravity last week's lesson. Do not conform. Do not go down. Do not settle. Hello? The Bible says, the man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I can say this in three minutes. Can I say this in three minutes? How many times have you prayed for something and the answer didn't come through and in the silence of your heart you said something like, I knew it. How can you In the silence of your heart. Maybe you had diarrhea, Mike. What am I talking Mike? Maybe Mike had diarrhea. 
Ndiyo. Mike kaka mkono kwa Tumaka declare akasema in the name of Jesus hii tumbo itanyamaza itanyamaza Mike has a meeting an important meeting Mike amesema in the name of Jesus stomach keep quiet Shh. silence in the name of Jesus Mike akaingia meeting akaka Haleluya kuna sauti tumbo ilitoa There was one outcome God is good There was only one outcome no other one is he runs. Haizi ka ni kukimbia. And Mike akikimbia atasema nini? Nilijua. Ni kenye nilikula. Hiyo hengi pona na maombi. God is good. <laughs> I'm saying this. I remember when I used to pray in Aboretum. And I'd tell the Lord about. Lord I pray. Silence the landlord. Silence the agent. Keep them quiet O oh Lord. May they not call me, may they not look for me until you provide the money. Hallelujah. Nikasema amen. Nikichukua two steps. I had an agent called John. Not to me, John agent. Two steps from a man. One, two. John agent. Kwa royangu nasema nini? Jodawa ya deni nikulipa. Amen. How often do we actually, in the silence of our hearts, we already know the outcome will not be what we have prayed for. But we pray anyway. Take time, call your thought. Do we consciously train our thoughts to see the miracle we desire? Have you trained your thoughts to see you without pain? Have you trained your thoughts to see you with financial abundance? Have you trained your thoughts to see you promoted? Have you trained your thoughts to see the miracle you desire? Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. Have we trained our thoughts? It is easy to pray for a breakthrough, but I have not thought about. Because my thinking is wired not to see the thing I'm praying for. My thinking is designed to see what I experience. Has my mind seen it? Nimekuja speed, sindio? Do we think about it? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do I see myself the delivered? Can I see it? Do not conform, but by the renewing, by, 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 by it says what? Do not conform to the of this world, right? Yes. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Conform, settle, transform, going to another, to another level. By the renewing of your mind. Do you see it? Do you see yourself and your husband having supper? Mumwana vele me fesuku. Deliberately was facing this side. How the answer manifested from this side, I don't know. I was facing this side. God is going to know who could have talked inside. I don't know why I'm talking to my uncle. I don't know if I'm talking to someone here. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10 5, bring every thought under the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bring every thought under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Bring every thought under the obedience of, Jesus. Bring every thought under the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give me King James. Every thought to be brought into captivity. Into captivity. Other versions say captivity. Every thought. This means that I have thought about me dying young. I bring that thought under captivity. I have thought of me being broke. I bring that thought under captivity. Do you realize that every time the things we always think come to pass? And I want you to focus on the things you think about that you fear the most. More often than not, the phone call you fear always comes in. The report you fear always comes through. Tasa. Have I thrown a glass and I live in a stone? Takudi wala wamechoka kichwa. Am I asking? I'm asking. I have a question. 
Bring every thought under captivity. The Bible says that, meaning that every time in spiritual matters, in the walk of Alex as a believer, Alex is thinking, what is my mind thinking about this? I have been told at work that they are retrenching people. What am I thinking about it? I question what I think about it. I just don't think about it. I question the thought. Bring it to captivity. Are we together? Nimesikia tumbo ikiuma. My question is, what do I think about my stomach paining? Train the thought. Bring it under captivity. Train it. Tunaongea. Train it. See it. Train the mind. You will not have a situation in your life where you won't be afraid. You won't have a situation where you don't feel alone or lonely. You won't have a situation where you, feel, you don't feel overwhelmed. All those are human processes. They come. But take that thought. Bring it to captivity. If you don't bring it to captivity, it grows. So it means that Miriam's mouth is praying victory. But Miriam's thoughts are defeat. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Hallelujah. Tunaongea. Haya, sikia ni point. Ni point mzuri sana. Focus your thoughts. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Focus your thoughts. Set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits at God's right hand in the place of honor and power. Put your mind on Christ. When we say, Father, you're mighty. Father, you're powerful. Father, you're great. Father, you're lifted. You're telling God, I'm not putting my mind where human limitations are. I'm putting my mind where you are. Because where God you are, there are endless possibilities. Where I am, there are limited possibilities. That's why Paul says, renew your mind with the spirit. If your mind is in heaven, you see possibilities. Jesus was walking, healing people. They asked him, how do you do these things? What did he say? I do what I see my father do. Put your treasures in heaven. In heaven, there are no impossibilities, right? Here are the impossibilities. Where does your mind spend most of the time? We're together. The book of Philippians says what? What is lovely? What is good? What is right? In these things, keep your, keep your thoughts. The Lord shall keep in perfect peace whosoever mind is stayed upon him. Number two, recognize God's opportunity. Recognize God's opportunity. Everything in your life is an opportunity for God. Recognize God's opportunity. Second Chronicles 20, verse 6. I think I'd want to uh, give me the message Bible. More than a conqueror, isn't you? I'm Colossians, first you Chronicles, one Chronicles. Every time in your life you meet an issue as you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Every time you meet an issue in your life, recognize God's opportunity to work. Father, I want to buy popcorn and see you fight. Oh, the victory God will give me in this issue. Yes. When I used to misbehave, my mother used to like telling me something. My mama was telling me, Victor, we fanya vituko yako, fanya vituko umalize. Lakini utashika microphone na utaubiri. Utapeana ushuda kubwa sana. Endelea. My rebellion to her was an opportunity for God to show himself. Hallelujah. Sometimes tell people that. Tell your husband. Mi naomba tu. Naomba. Pombe takukata. Wewe, na pombe takukata na kwambia. Ngoja tu. Enda ukunywe, itakukata, na kwambia itakukata. Na naomba. Sata mstuwe, I'm fasting 21 days. Pombe kukatai. Atastuka, ay, kwa nini sasa? Shuti usukwe serious. In fact, I'm just a social drinker. Tata nda kuchinge words. Una mstuwe? God is good. You know my mother used to use those things and they used to work. Victor, untaka niombe? Unataka niombe? Mambia mama, pana, mama nini sasa? Ni stage. I'm still growing up. Yo sana nimemstua na tano ndio nataka niombe. Nikiamua niombe Mungu atanisikia. Ukisikia kitu kama unajua hapa Mungu atamsikia. Mambia mam, hapana, haiko serious. 
Nitaacha, nitaacha, nitaacha. Yeah. Amen. That is yes. God is good. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And at times, you look at your life and think, this is an opportunity for God. I want... Uh, okay, let's start there. Where? Oh God of our ancestors, are you God in heaven above? Are you not God in heaven above and ruler of all kingdoms below? You hold all power and might in your fist. No one stands a chance against you. And didn't you make the natives of this land live as you brought your people Israel in? Turning it over permanently to your people Israel, the descendants of Abraham, your friend. They have lived here and built a holy house of worship to honor you saying, when the worst happens a part of life, when the worst happens, whether war or flood or disease or famine, and we take our place before this temple, we know you are personally present in this place and pray out our pain and trouble. We know that you will listen and give us victory. Amen. He's saying that when flood, disease, famine, all these things come, it's an opportunity for God to show off. Recognize the opportunity of God in your life. Amen. You are applying for a job. Recognize the opportunity for God in your life. Hallelujah. Number three, act. Action, action, action. Your action must be consistent with your thoughts. Your action must be consistent with how sure you are God will move. Your action can be praise. Your action can be to ignore. Hallelujah. Jews, what are your story? Can I give you a story? I don't laugh. This week, I'll this week. Was it Monday or Tuesday? Can't remember. In the house. So I'm in the bed, I'm tossing and turning. More often than not, I'm tossing and turning like that. Something is about to pop. So I'm tossing and turning. Then suddenly, I see an image of an old woman standing next to my bed. So I look at this woman. Who art thou hither? So you my view. But I thought, I said, anyway, let me try and sleep. So the next thing this woman does is she puts her knee hmm, on my chest. Eh? Puts her knee on my chest. Then she holds my hand like this. You know, Ambia, the more you grow spiritually, the more you go through crazy things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jackie. More anointing. Amen. It's more anointing. More war. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I'm going to say, 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 I'm Physically, kwanza ni andeko jetoa. Ni kafikiri ya. Kasema sasa. Huyu mutu wana naribio singizi. Of course, kuna vitu wale sema. Which I can't say here. Kamambia. I didn't even address it. I said I won't even talk to you. I said I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. There's nothing you can do to me. So in fact, I want to go and pee. God is good. That's what I said. In fact, I want to go and pee. So I want to go to the toilet. And my mind said, oh, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. I didn't, utter, I didn't try to move and fight. I didn't try to call the name of Jesus. I just said in my heart, I mean, I'm ignoring, but I want to go to the loo. I was scared to come to the loo. I was scared to come to the loo. I was scared to come to the loo. Amen. Siku anza hapa vitu mingi na amusha my wife ati amuka tupigane ya hapa na vitu. Why are we making up in the middle of the night? God is good. That's a small problem for Jesus. The enemy thought I would panic. Ni anze, Jesus! Jesus! Now she wakes up, I'm going to panic when you hey, Jesus, one job, hey, Jesus. What is it, Jesus? You know, first of all, she wouldn't know what it is. I don't know what Jesus, 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 Jesus. Why are you calling Jesus? Jesus, why? Jesus, what? There are sweet things, I think. <laughs> God is good. You, you're not support, teamwork, eh? And I joined to Jesus. How many people are the problem? I'm going to Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus. Okay, ni nini? Jesus. Ni nini? Jesus, ni nini? Why? Why? Ni Jesus, Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Don't let Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Ni kena tanks and tanks. Tanks. Okay, why are we praying? Tanks. Kumaliza na mambia wa ilikuwa attack. Oh, okay. Ilikuwa nini? Mambia sujuba, thank you for joining. Thank you for your cooperation. It's well appreciated. <laughs> God is good. Unalala. Because me, I said in my heart, you can't harm me. You cannot kill me. Don't do you are not an istua. The action is consistent. Warfare at times is won by praising. Warfare at times is won by thanking, fighting, ignoring, or speaking. We're together. That's how warfare is won. Not every time you bind the demon. At times just ignore it. You might go, you shall go, nyoka ipite kwa nyumba. Ignore. Some mashitani yapa imipita. There are demons you ignore. Haki muna niangila na macho za mfani. Muna shanga sasa ni nini yapana. Sasa zingine tu lala. Amen. Hizo sa usiku waki lala. Haki woye la leni. Wacheni kwa musha watu kwa taa kwa nyumba kwa kwa shamata. Sleep. Because those ones thrive on your fear. There are demons the enemy sends to instill fear to discourage you from something that you need to divinely do. Every time you have those attacks at night, it's to instill fear to distract you from something you should divinely do. Manishika. Hallelujah. Good, God is good. I said what? The next thing you do is invite the Holy Ghost. Invite the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be with you. Let the Holy Spirit comfort you. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Always tell the Holy Spirit, I am more than a conqueror for him that loves me, but I need you to help me reaffirm this victory. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Ghost, remind me who I am. Holy Ghost, remind me of scripture. Holy Ghost, give me strength. Holy Ghost, give me joy. Sazingine, we forget to ask him for joy. You cannot self-generate joy. Joy comes from the Holy Ghost. Wana be Holy Spirit nipake mafuta. Amen. Naenda date. What was in your evil Holy Spirit? Nipake mafuta. Let me glow. Amen. Mi chekeshe kidogo Holy Spirit. Kichu ena uma ni chekeshe. Give me something to laugh about. Talk to the Holy Ghost. Let him hold you in that moment. Ni chekeshe Holy Spirit. Kichu ena uma. Amen. Holy Spirit ni ambia ni kunye nini. Ni kunye green tea. God is good. Muuliza sa zingine. Invite the Holy Spirit. Mwambi Holy Spirit ni mapata hii message kwa simu. Ebu ni chanue. Ni chanue. Ni chome nyumba. Ama ni chome nyama. I want to see fire. God is good. Do I burn meat? <laughs> Do I burn house? But ask the Holy Spirit. Invite him. I personally believe you are more than a conqueror because of the role the Holy Spirit plays. Tell him. Ah, I have a financial issue. The debtors are calling me every day. Holy Spirit, I invite you. Tell me what to do. But give me peace. Give me joy. Some basic things come at joy, peace. Those things. Nipatia, tuizo ni free. Holy Ghost, now I'm on a tumbo, but give me joy. I have ulcers. I know you're healing me of them. But while you're healing me, give me joy. Let my joy not go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Number five, Rabba not known bear. Now is the time. That is what we are praying about today. Now is the time for victory. Now is the time for victory. So, how do you experience winning? You have your thoughts. Number two, recognize God's opportunity. Number three, act in a way that is consistent to the victory that you want. Number four, involve the Holy Spirit. And number five, now is the time for victory. Your mind must believe victory is now. Under the laws of faith, we say faith is now. Faith is now. Exodus 14, 13. Exodus 14, 13. That's what we are going to pray for from today. For today. Exodus 14, 13.
Give me NLT. New Living Translation. Good. God is good. What is the most powerful thing here? What's the most powerful thing there? What is the most powerful word there? Mike. Mike was like, ah, but you are, Mike was very similar to my yaw. Ah, you get the wrong thing. <laughs> uh -huh. So what's the most powerful word? Most powerful word. Michael Majiridim, the most powerful word there is today. Today. Leo, miracle is today. Faith is now. Whenever you pray, whenever you are believing God, believe it is today, it is now. If you are believing God for a financial breakthrough, believe it is today. But you live here, okay, something has changed. God is good. The most powerful word here is today. The Egyptians are there. Amen. Don't be afraid. That is continuous. Stand where you are. Amen. That can be continuous. I can stand tomorrow even, or the day after. But this is the guarantee. But I want my miracle today. I want to be a conqueror today. The law of the beautiful thing about conquering is you don't have to conquer tomorrow. You have to conquer one day. Today. Hallelujah. The devil always catches you on time. That I have been jobless for 15 years. No. No. I have been jobless today. And today is the day I expect my miracle. Are we talking? The devil always wants you to look at how long it has taken. Because he knows the longer it has taken, your humanity will reduce the power of God. So you have to make it a small problem for Jesus. By making it a small problem for you. By saying, I have been sick only today. And that is why I believe God can heal me today. You need to survive one day. Not all days. Ya kesho ni ya? Kesho. The Bible says the Lord watches over tomorrow. Today, if you hear the voice of the Lord, harden not your hearts. It is always today. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. All the time. I got warm. I don't know how many of you are trusting that God can do something today. Amen. You know, I have a crisis. And I'm praying the Holy Ghost gives me a day. Because I'm hearing powerful testimonies from this fellowship. Powerful testimonies every day. Think of a day when I'll just stop. Amen. And just abandon everything. Because every time I'm hearing testimonies, someone dared God and God healed of this. Someone healed of that. Yesterday I was praying for someone on Thursday, Wednesday in the office. Amen. The next day the person called me early in the morning and said the miracle that they had received. A tangible miracle. Amen. God is good. God is good. I'm hearing a lot of miracles just flowing in this place. And I'm thanking God for it. I'm grateful to God. I don't want us to look how long we have been there. I don't want us to look how long we have suffered. I don't want us to look for how long we have waited. 
Think of it, the Egyptians you see today. God does not say, the Egyptians you have seen for 400 years. He does not say that. Does God say that? God himself says, the Egyptians you see today. He doesn't say, the Egyptians you have been seeing your entire life from when you were a child, now you are an adult. No, today. Because God needs a day to change your life. God needs a day to transform your life. Every time in the presence of God, my personal conviction, this is what I do. It's not perfect, but I'll share with you. Every time I'm in the presence of God, I always believe that God can do something radical in my life in that moment. I never think that God will work tomorrow. I always think if today is the only day I have left, then it has to record as a miracle that I received. Every time in the presence of God, my passion, my zeal, my belief, my thoughts are God can touch me now. God can change my life now. I would rather believe that. Amen. Than believe it's next week. Hallelujah. How many believe it is now? How many believe it is now? Put up your hand if you believe it is now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift you, we praise you, and we adore you, Almighty Father. We trust the Lord with the lifting of hands, we are testifying that, Father, you are able to work a miracle in our lives today in the name of Jesus. Father, you are able to transform our lives today in the name of Jesus. Lord, the miracle is today and the miracle is right now in this place in your presence, Almighty Father. I decree in the name of Jesus, every hand lifted high, King of Kings, is a hand that says they are ready for a miracle today. They are saying, Lord, you have an opportunity right now to touch their lives and perform the supernatural. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare your power. I declare your goodness that today in the name of Jesus, may a miracle take place today in your presence. Right now in your presence. May the impossible take place right now, right here in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree your miracle working power. I decree your miracle working power. The Egyptians, they have seen today is the day that it ends, Almighty Father. We believe you for a miracle. We trust you for a miracle. We know the Lord, you are able to do it. And I want to just to begin to declare now. This is the day. This is the day. Just start to declare. This is the day. This is the day. That Father, you touch my life. This is the day you perform that wonder. This is the day you do that thing I desire. Just begin to decree yourself. Begin to decree yourself. Don't postpone your own moment. Begin to decree yourself. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. This is the hour. This is the hour. In the name of Jesus, right now, in this sanctuary, Father, it is the time for a miracle to work. It is the time for chains to break. It is the time, Lord, for doors to open. It is the time, Almighty Father, for healing to take place. It is the time for bondage to be broken. It is the time for increase, the time for lifting, the time to transform and renew lives. It is right now in your presence, Lord. Your word says that we stand and see your salvation today. Father, in the name of Jesus, your power is now. Your power is today. I provoke the power that you have, Lord, to work now in the lives of your sons and daughters. It is right now that which we have prayed for, that which we have believed for, that which we have desired. It is right now in your presence. Healing is now. Deliverance is now. Redemption is now. Restoration is now. Progress is now. Healing is now. In the name of Jesus, I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost Ghost. Healing is now in the name of Jesus. We are not postponing your move. We are not delaying your move. We are trusting it is now. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. It doesn't matter how much we have suffered. It doesn't matter how much we have endured. Father, you are able to heal the woman who was sick for 12 years in one day. You are able to resurrect Lazarus who was dead for four days in one day. You are able, Father, to end the cycle of poverty in that widow's life in one day. You are able, Lord, to bring Almighty Father's sight to blind Bartimaeus in one day. 
you are able almighty father to change the life of peter from a fisherman to a fisher of men in one day it was in one day that you are able to part the red sea it is one day the lord you set your captives free it is one day and the day is today the time is now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we are trusting it is now that change is now transformation is now the miracle is now you spared not your son how can you deny us all things we declare in the name of jesus we testify of a god who works now a god who moves now a god who's mighty right now you're not mighty tomorrow you're mighty now we trust you lord you're mighty now we trust you to be mighty now we know you're the same yesterday tomorrow and forever but lord right now in this place is the time we want a miracle right now in this place is when you want a miracle tomorrow you have catered for it's today we are asking for tomorrow you have already gone ahead it's today we are asking for we are praying for our today we are praying for our today, our breakthrough for today, our healing for today, our transformation for today. Set us up, Father. Set us up, Lord, for your power, for your move, for your miracle. Set us up, Jehovah. Come on, declare right now. Take authority. Take authority. Take authority. It is now. Your business changes now. Healing takes place now. Your children get delivered now. Your husband gets saved now. Your wife gets saved now. It is now. It is now. That chain breaks now. That covenant breaks now. That yoke breaks now. It is now. In the name of Jesus. It is now. We are calling for the anointing for now. Oh, Rama Sandera, oh, Rama Bosandera.